Hey there, welcome from Southern Ohio. I'm out here on the tractor today uh, to just so you can get a better view, scenery in the background instead of my boring office or that boring gray screen that I have that I put behind me. I know, boring, but uh, my office is a mess so I have to put something behind me. This is not a mess though, this is beautiful out here. Um, my name is Vanessa and welcome to my channel. And today I wanna talk about how to write a sales email within your email sequencing. So. Um, those of you that are listening, I am assuming you know what email marketing is. If you have no idea, I do have a free course below that I teach you what email marketing is and how to even set up your sequence and things like that and how you can use that to help 10x your business. And it's free. I don't ask for charge card, nothing like that. But I do ask for your me email address so I can send you the membership link. And again, it's free. So I just wanted to put that plug in there so you know that there is something free down there for you. And I do talk about writing a sales email within your sequence. But those of you that don't want to take the time, you already know what email marketing is, then this one's for you. First of all, you need to make sure you have a good subject line. And a lot of times people don't take enough time with the subject line but it has to be something that's going to grab people and really the best way i know to teach you how to do that is sign up for a lot of other people who are in your same industry sign up for their email list and i know you don't want your inbox to bombard it but i love to get these emails because i watch i've got lots of emails coming in and i pay attention to what are the ones that are catching my eye. Now some of them are annoying and some of them I don't like, but then I'm also learning not to use headings like that or subject lines like that. The ones that catch my eye, hmm, I like the way they said that. I like the way they caught my eye. I like the way they wrote their letter. So that's how you learn. Um, you want to create curiosity, something that's like, hmm, I wonder what they have to say about that. How, where's this going? Okay, so that's a good subject line. It's the hook. Um, just like when you go to read a good book, don't you read that first chapter? I know for me, if that first chapter doesn't hook me, I put the book down. I'm not going to waste my time reading it. So that's what a subject line is in that email letter. Now we are talking about a sales letter today, but you don't want to right away let somebody know you're trying to sell something. It's just the format of the letter is going to be a little bit different. And when I talked about the hook, a lot of times that pre-header line or the first line in your email is basically where you're going to really hook them. You've got them to click, you've got them in, now you need to hook them. It's like opening the book. The title got my attention, I'm going to get the book out of the library, I'm going to buy it, now I'm going to read that first chapter. Am I hooked? Am I going to keep reading? And it's again, I do not. I, I remember when I was young, that uh, maybe junior high, I remember thinking that every time I picked up a book, I had to read the whole thing. I just had to. And one day I just sat there and thought, if I'm wasting my time reading books that aren't any good, then I'll never get to those books that are good. And that was kind of my justification. It was really hard for me. I love to read and I didn't ever want to insult anybody and not read their book once I picked it up. But I didn't, didn't have enough time in my life to read lousy books. I only wanted to read good ones. So think about that with your email. Is somebody going to open it, be hooked, and really want to read it and find that they're not, their time is not being wasted? So now you've got your line, your first line. They're hooked. In that first paragraph, I want you to talk about a story your story about how whatever it is that you're offering. Now you're offering something. This is a sales email, okay? You know it's a sales email, but they don't. Now I want you to put in that first paragraph a story about what led you to this product, okay? And what it did for you, okay? It's all about you in the first paragraph. And then talk about the solution and offer that link to the solution. Do not elaborate on that link or that solution. Just be very nonchalant. This is what I did. This is the link. Boom. Leave it alone. Now in the second, the next paragraph, you want to give more details and maybe turn it around and talk about them. Have you been struggling with such and such like I was? So you're kind of taking your story saying how, hey, I've been through this. I can relate to you and I know how you feel. And then boom give the link again. So do you see how I did that? But it's very nonchalant. When people try to sell me on that link or that benefit and all the features about it, it turns me off. But if you're offering it to me because it helped you, maybe, you know, I can say it helped me. So now maybe it will help you check it out. I'm more apt to open it up and you probably are too. And then in the end, 
if you have testimonials about it, if you're, especially if you're selling a high price ticket, maybe coaching or something like that, you might want to add some testimonials. Here are some other people that have benefited from this product as well. But I'm going to give my own advice here. I have seen people that had a link for testimonials and I love to read testimonials I actually go in and read I like to hear what people say especially if I'm spending more money I definitely want testimonials when it's a higher priced item but don't give me so many of them that it's ridiculous I had somebody give me a link and I'm not kidding there was like four pages of testimonials it was overkill and it actually turned me off I don't know why it was just too much so be careful have that balance in there and make it look real like I, you know you're my friend I'm offering here some other people I'm not gonna give you a number you decide but don't overkill it either and then that's it. You've given the testimonials. That's the end. Have your closing statement and you're done. Now, typically when I do a sales item, I typically will have three emails. The first one is written like that. And the second one, the second email in that series is usually, um, I'll usually talk about it again. Hey, did you, did you, you know, hear about, um, I, I, did you get my last email where I talked about such and such? And you might tell your story in a different way, um, rephrase things, and then you've got your third one. Hey, I promise I won't keep talking about this, but I was so excited about it, and I just wanted to make sure that you didn't miss out. And so as your friend, I want to make sure that I'm helping you with this problem that you have, and I want you to get the solution. So typically I only send about three emails, and that's it. All right, now when I send the my emails my email sequence I think of it as a journey in my email I think about it as I want them to take a journey I want them to click the email okay and then I want them to read it so it has to be good enough so that they'll read it from top to bottom now I know a lot of people will say well how long should it be I have had emails that were very short read it all the way through they were I didn't feel like it didn't give me enough and I have one person that is very very good at telling stories she doesn't send emails very often I think they're only about once a month even but she writes a book I mean it's huge but they're very very good and I always read them but she doesn't send me that every week and she doesn't send it two or three times a week so I see it as a treat once a month I get to read this email so it really depends on what kind of a writer you are and who your audience is and sometimes write short emails sometimes make them longer and see what works watch the analytics that go with it my third step in that journey is me convincing them that they need this product to help them with the problem that they have so you're gonna click you want them to read and then you want them to be convinced so there's your journey click read convince CRC all right hopefully this was helpful um, again I talk about this in my course below where I actually take you into an autoresponder and kind of show you how to set that up um, but today I thought we would enjoy a nice scenery back here and um, make sure you subscribe in my channel I do thank you for getting this far so I want to thank those of you who who did listen to the video all the way through I know we're in a fast-paced world and everybody just wants to click through get quick results and move on and I understand that but if you stuck around thank you and in my channel I want to let you know that I am here to help you earn money save time and find balance in your life you can do it but you can do it all but you just have to find out what are the things that I need to cut out of my life to find that balance so that I can achieve the things that I want to achieve in my business so that I can meet my goals and that I have for my family and for my um, maybe if you're giving to an organization or something whatever your vision is you need to find that balance and not just go 100% into your business and forget about the rest of your life so it can happen you can do it people do it all the time um, so stick around and I'll give you some tips in all three of those areas thanks for sticking around